Welcome to Insight, produced in partnership with RSU TV at Roger State University in Oklahoma. Today we are chatting with Keith Elder, Executive Director of the Tulsa Symphony, who has generously agreed to share some of his experience with us. I'd like to thank you, Keith, for joining us today. Mark, thank you for having me on. Yeah. Symphonic music is so wonderful, and this particular symphony was established quite recently. Yes. In 2005. Talk about the establishment of Tulsa Symphony and then your recruitment here sure. in order to lead this wonderful, small, but very impactful mm -hmm. symphonic orchestra. So uh, to, to talk about the so Tulsa Symphony, you need to talk about the Tulsa Philharmonic. And the Tulsa Philharmonic was an orchestra that was here for many years that ended up through labor and through uh, some management issues going out of business. And uh, it was a huge loss to this community. And so uh, I say it's sort of like the Phoenix rising uh, is what the Tulsa Symphony was because it came from within the community. And the community said, we need to do something different. And that's what this orchestra is. So it's an orchestra that was created that is fully integrated, meaning board, musicians, staff are all integrated working together. So it grew from the community. It, it grew, grew from, from the, the passion, community. From the musicians, from, from the from, audience. From the musicians, from the audience, from the community. Um, when the Tulsa Philharmonic went out of business, it basically said, we're out of money, we're closing doors, we're not refunding tickets, we're not refunding any donations, we're done. And it left a, a horrible sting to this community. And so the community said, music is incredibly important to what we do here. And it grew out of that. And, you know, I, I look at this, you know, coming here to this orchestra, I look at this as this is a community service organization that uses music as the vehicle to touch people in this community, as opposed to it's an arts organization that promotes the arts. And that's a, what's so different about this orchestra and organization uh, from the rest of the orchestras in this country. Um, you know, there's a there's a sort of an overall arching thing that nobody is bigger than the organization. Uh, we don't have a music director. All of the artistic uh, planning and vision is done with an artistic committee of board, musicians, and staff. Um, this is a very different idea from uh, other orchestras because there is a top-down sen uh, sensibility, which is justified by expertise. Mm -hmm. Um, however, what you're talking about here is the joy of performance. So the decisions on what to perform, how do those get made? So, so what happens is we have this artistic committee that's created board, musicians, and staff, and they develop a programming. And the programming uh, is everything from what that committee thinks the audience was going to want to hear, what the orchestra wants to play, and what is going to be you know, beneficial for the health of the of the organization. Also, what's going to sell tickets? What's going to sell tickets? Well, that's that next step because then Artistic presents their programming to the marketing committee, mm -hmm. who then says, why are you doing this? So in, in a lot of orchestras, you have the Artistic that's in this silo, you have marketing over here, and a lot of times they don't talk. We're here, we have Artistic talking to marketing, presenting such as uh, General Motors might have a, a new car that is then presented to the advertising market division and they can give the concept of why they've done this so then marketing can go off and sell it. And marketing they might say to artistic, um, this program's not going to sell. Or uh, another example is we're looking at a program next year that involves sort of, it has a theme of music, of water. And we do a collaboration with the aquarium and they said, well, this program would be perfect during that month because we could then co-present that with the aquarium that artistic never would have thought about. <laughs> See, it's, it, it, it's, not, it's not the rarefied uh, world of, right. of uh, art for art's sake. Um, it's, it's really the, the world of art for enjoyment's sake mm -hmm. and uh, to allow the performers to express themselves. So this is really about art growing and welling up from within the community and people making those decisions and then following their views and presenting, sharing that yeah. with people here in the area. Correct. And using that music to touch aspects of all aspects of this community because the orchestra does main stage concerts. Mm -hmm. It plays for the ballet. It does this program that's in collaboration with Carnegie Hall Link Up, which is, you know, we do these concerts in front of 
about 25,000 kids in this area. So we do many concerts for the kids there. But we also do a program called Heartstrings, which is putting chamber music out into areas that need the power of music for healing, whether it's a hospital, whether it's a, a, a shelter, a food kitchen. And under this model, with these musicians, that's all workable because it's all about using the vehicle of music to really touch a community and provide value to a community. What is your audience mix like? Uh, very often, uh, symphonies around the country, you see two different factors in those symphonies. Mm -hmm. First, you see that the audience is, is, is old, mm -hmm. and uh, you also see that audiences are very often uh, white, mm -hmm. white Europeans. Correct. Um, talk about how your audience mix here is shaped. So, you know, my theory on this is that the graying of the audience has been graying for 200 years. Right. <laughs> you know, and, and that doesn't concern me. But there is a big concern out there right now with the graying of the audience. And that is with the loss of music education in the schools. Right. And so what we're doing is through LinkUp, we're investing in the third through the fifth graders. Okay. Then we have this new program pilot that we're doing this year called Step Up, which is sixth through eighth grades that we're mm -hmm. taking in developing a curriculum here so that we're providing the support for the music educators in this community. We provide artists in the schools, members of our orchestra go into the schools and they do master classes and they teach and they become part of the school community and, and, and they're human to the students. <laughs> they're not just a, a, a figure up on the stage. Um, and so it's investing in the early years so that you can reap the benefits 40 years later. <laughs> and are you crossing lines of, of income and race and location um, a, a, as well in terms of the physical interactions of people, yeah, yeah. not just through electronic means? Mm -hmm. I mean, yes, and that, that's where I, I, I start moving into we're a community service organization providing value to a community. So example being, we have a school uh, of a lower income school and when the kids come in to, to get dropped off in the morning or get picked up in the afternoon, we have a string quartet there playing. Oh really? So that the, the students will come in with their parents and they'll sit and listen to the string quartet and then go off to class or they'll get picked up with their parents as they're leaving and it's just a string quartet playing and they're not uh, um, talking or, or, or having a presentation, it's just music that's there. We, we go to a, a, a a food kitchen where we have music playing in our another string quartet there that it's not a concert it's just music so that people can sit there and experience the art the way they would like to experience the that art. is so right. wonderful it's taking the music and ensuring that that music fills our lives yeah. and our lives are where we live mm -hmm. they we, we live our lives when we're filling up gas in the tank. Mm -hmm. We live our lives when we're when we're eating, when we're going to school. Yeah. You're you're actually taking that music and you're bringing it out to everyone out of the Correct. concert hall. Correct. Out of the concert hall. Um, and so that music touches everybody. That is one of the few things that every human being when they hear something it jogs a memory or it that you hear the uh, phrase, the hair on the back of your neck stands up because it just is tingly after a Beethoven symphony, or there's that anticipation in the hall. And so we take that connection and put that where people are and where they can actually, that's why I call it the healing power of music, where they can really listen and, and feel that, you know, putting it in a, you know, the Veterans Administration Hospital. We go down there so that the, the nurses and the doctors can take a moment and just step back, listen, feel it, get touched, and then and, and move forward from there. Now, who directs your, your, um, your performances? Who is the... So we have, we have a principal guest conductor. Mm -hmm. uh, this year it's Daniel Hege, and Daniel does three concerts. And then we sit as a committee and look through conductors and determine who is going to come in and, and conduct. And the interesting thing here is the conductor doesn't have say in the program. So it's a matter of working with the conductor saying, we have this program, are you willing to learn the program and conduct it? Uh, and that's turning this whole concept on its head. <laughs> right, right. Uh, as opposed to a conductor telling the orchestra, you're going to be playing this, the orchestra is telling the conductor, we would like you to conduct this. How did you come to Tulsa? 
So I came uh, to Tulsa. I was at the Aspen Music Festival in school, mm -hmm. and um, a board member came and visited me there and said, would you consider coming to Tulsa? I knew nothing about the community of Tulsa. And I said, well, probably not. But And, and the board member was smart and said, well, come to our opening night. Just come and visit and hear the orchestra. So I came here, and this is an amazing community. You know, when I talk about how the orchestra came from the community, this community really loves the arts. Uh, and it's something that I never knew anything about. And, you know, one of the things coming here I've been saying is that the country's going to hear about what's going on here. The country's going to hear about the arts, the orchestra, as we're building through. Um, you know, it's a very economical community for people to live in. You know, this is a community that musicians can come and play in the orchestra and buy a house. Um, this is a community where, you know, it's easy to get around. It has everything you need, and they value music and the arts. And so, um, after we came here, my wife and I came here for the first concert, we went back and said, wow, the opportunity here is amazing. How do you think the repertoire will revolve? Uh, will evolve over the next years. Our, our repertoire here yes. is going to be, um, we're going to continue to do big pieces. We're going to be bringing in um, some soloists that are, you know, some exciting soloists. Do you have a balance between the, cla the classical classical and the more modern? Well, here's, here's an example of a program we're putting together for next season, which is Bela Fleck, great banjo player. We're looking at bringing him in. People would look at that as a pops concert. Mm -hmm. First half of the program, we're putting List Hungarian Rhapsody and Appalachian Spring by Copeland in a mission, Bela. So it's not building a pops program. It's building a program that's accessible to an audience. And that's the difference. So often, orchestras think classical pops. We have this bucket, we have this bucket, and they can't cross. And so it's those pieces that we're looking at of saying, you know, we, we don't want to pigeonhole classical pops. Mm -hmm. We want to make it so it's accessible programming, but also programming like the Concerto for Orchestra by Louis Lasky that people, it stretches their listening and it, and, it, and it, you know, exposes them to something that they normally would not come and hear. It's so, it's so fascinating. Necessity being the mother of invention. Mm -hmm. You're reinventing how classical music is presented here in Tulsa. You're reinventing your governance model, your decision-making model. Keith Elder, thank you so much for sharing this wonderful evolution of classical music in Tulsa and the work of the Tulsa Symphony. And thank you so much for your insights. Mark, thank you. It's been a pleasure.